What's up everybody, how's it going? So a little earlier today, I came across this post on LinkedIn, this guy tagged me in the post, and in it, he shared this story about how he recently failed a coding interview at Facebook. I think this was his second time around interviewing there. He had gone past the first couple of stages, he had done one of the technical phone interviews and gone past it, I think, and this was either the second phone interview or the on-site interviews, and he just didn't quite make it through. And in this post, he was highlighting the fact that on LinkedIn, you see so many any success stories, and it can be kind of demotivating sometimes when you're not quite there yet. You haven't quite gotten the same success. And he wanted to share his failure, failure, so to speak, uh, sort of just to, to, to be very transparent. And he said, you know, I'm going to keep grinding and, and do better next time. And I really liked the post. I think that uh, I gave major props to this person. I commented on the post and, and said, I think it's important that we acknowledge all of these failures that we have to go through to reach uh, success. But so then this post got me thinking about myself, because if you look at my YouTube channel, I have a lot of videos that kind of give off that vibe of, whoa, this guy's really successful. For instance, that one really popular video that I have from never having written a line of code in my life to getting employed at Google as a software engineer, or the video that I have where I said that I learned Python in 10 days uh, during my interview prep. So a lot of these videos make people think like, whoa, this dude has so much success. You know, he, he learned to code in six months and got into Google. Success. Or he got a performance rating that put him in the top 5% of software engineers at Google. Success. Or he has a pretty profitable business, algo expert, that's growing a lot. Success. But what people don't see through a lot of my videos is all of the work and all of the failures and all of the difficulties that I've had to go through to get a lot of these things. And, and trust me when I say that there are so many failures and difficulties and obstacles that I've had to face to get to where I am and that I continue to face every day. If we're talking about entrepreneurship and algo expert, there's so many things that I've failed at in the past or that I continue to fail at every day. I'll probably make a completely different video on the topic of entrepreneurial failures. But so in this video, I wanted to share with you some of my coding interview failures that you don't know about. So specifically, I want to share two stories where really I failed at coding interviews and a lot of valuable lessons learned from those stories. And then at the end of the video, I want to share a sort of overarching uh, thing that happened to me during my early uh, days of interview prepping when I was trying to land that job at Google that a lot of people don't know about. So my first coding interview failure story is one that I've actually briefly shared in that one video, the six months to Google video, and it happened with Lyft, the ride sharing company, the competitor to Uber. Basically what happened there is Lyft was one of the very first companies that I interviewed with after I graduated from my coding boot camp. And I remember I went through the first phone interview, technical phone interview, and I actually did pretty well there and I passed it. And then the second technical phone interview, I just failed. I remember I did very poorly, I was stuck. Uh, the problem was the longest palindromic substring question and I just didn't do well. Now, the lesson to be learned from that one is that I was just not prepared enough. I remember I came out of that interview thinking, boy, do I need to prepare for these coding interviews. I'm underprepared. I can't be uh, overly confident about this. And so there is actually something actionable from that failure. I need to prepare. So for instance, if you just recently went through such a failure where you, you realize, hmm, I didn't prepare enough. Maybe it's because you didn't purchase Algo Expert using the promo code CLEM, C L E M, for a discount on the platform. Or maybe you already own Algo Expert and you just only did like five questions and you should do more questions. The point of this story is that sometimes failures are gonna be actionable. They're gonna be things that are really in your control and you have to identify the things that you could do better and just act on them. Now this brings me to the second coding interview failure that I experienced that I think is a little bit more interesting because it's a, it's a very different type of lesson. And this is one story that I've never shared publicly. I don't think I've shared it on this YouTube channel. I haven't shared it on LinkedIn or anywhere else. And this coding interview failure happened with Two Sigma. Two Sigma is a hedge fund headquartered in New York City. It's a very technology driven hedge fund that competes for talent with the likes of Google and Facebook. It's a very popular company 
for software engineers to interview at. They pay very well. They're notorious for having difficult interviews. And I actually interviewed uh, with Two Sigma, and I think I did mention this, that I interviewed with them in the Six Months to Google video, right at the time that I was interviewing with Google. So my Google interviews were on February 13th, 2017, and my interviews with Two Sigma were the day after, February 14th, 2017, which is Valentine's Day. What a great day to interview Valentine's Day. I was very excited about Two Sigma as a company. I was very interested in the company. I had heard a lot of cool things about it. I had actually gone through a coding challenge for them, which I passed. I had gone through a technical phone interview, which had been very interesting, where I had struggled a bit on certain things, and then I had done pretty well on other things. I had meshed well with the, the interviewer and I had ended up passing it and then I had that day of on-sites. Now I prepared as much as I could for that. I really did. I spent those 10 days leading up to the Google and Two Sigma interviews doing everything that I could, at least as far as algorithms and data structures were concerned. I really was as prepared as I could be. The day of the interview came along and if you're not familiar with how Two Sigma interviews work, or at least on-site interviews, they basically give you three interviews in the morning. That's what I had. Then you have a lunch interview with them, and the lunch interview is not really an interview, you just go out to lunch with employees, and while you're at lunch, they determine if they want to keep you for the afternoon. So presumably, if you didn't do well in the morning interviews, they just tell you after lunch, hey, go home, pretty savage. But if you did do well, they keep you for the afternoon for another set of about three interviews. So the way that it went for me is my first two interviews of the day went extremely well. I remember they were algorithm and data structures interviews. They went super well. I really knocked them out of the part, or at least I came out of them thinking I did. The third interview didn't go so well. The third interview was a systems design interview. Now, as a side note, I don't mean to bash on Two Sigma, but I think that it's a very poor practice for a company to interview entry-level candidates on systems design. I think that that's more warranted for more senior-level candidates, you know, at least with a couple years of work experience, but that's what happened. Now, I had prepared as much as I could for systems design. Unfortunately, at the time, there weren't great resources out there for systems design. Fortunately for you, in a couple of months, we're coming with a systems design course on Algo Expert, so stay tuned. It's coming very soon. But so I had really done my best with what I had at my disposal, but that interview just didn't go well. It didn't go super well. I tried to kind of like improvise and to, to make the best out of a bad situation. And I came out of it thinking, okay, I'm not sure if I'm gonna pass this uh, lunch portion, like I don't know if they're going to keep me for the afternoon. They did keep me for the afternoon, so presumably those first two interviews really pulled me up and they wanted me enough to stay. And then the afternoon went amazing. I had three more interviews, I think, maybe four, I think it was three, with uh, more senior folks at the company. They went really well. I had great discussions with them, great conversations. The sort of evaluation portion felt like it went really well, the coding interview, the algorithms and all that. And I remember coming out of the day of interviews thinking, I nailed this. Like, put aside that little systems design blunder, but clearly they kept me for the afternoon, I nailed this. I came out of it thinking I did much better than my Google interviews. Google interviews, I felt pretty confident. I was like, okay, I think those went well. But the Two Sigma interviews, I was like, okay, there's there's almost no way, like I would be very surprised if I don't get an offer. Now, given the title of this video, I don't think that you need me to tell you what happened. I'll say it anyway. But basically about a week or two weeks later, I heard back from them and they didn't move forward with me. They told me, you know, you were a very qualified candidate and some of our interviewers really, really enjoyed their conversations with you. So really I hadn't, you know, uh, imagined that I that I did well with some of the interviewers. Like I, clearly some people had said like, wow, this person is really good. But at the end of the day, you know, we're it's unfortunate, but we're not gonna be moving forward with your candidacy. And I forget if this, if I received this news before or after I got my hire decision from Google. So that's a bit fuzzy to me now. But I remember I was like really bummed out. I was thinking like, I did my best. I did my very best, both in preparation and the day of the interviews. I think it went really well. I thought I was gonna get it and I didn't get it. You know, it wasn't like the Lyft interview where there was a clear actionable thing of, whoa, I gotta prepare a bit more. I can't be like overly confident. Here really, like, I did my best, it didn't go my way. And so the lesson from this uh, that, I wanna, that I wanna accentuate here is just that sometimes in life, things don't go your way. 
And like coding interviews, though this applies to, to all aspects of life, but in coding interviews in particular, sometimes you've done everything that you could. Like you did every question on Algo Expert. You you watched all of the interview tips videos. You've done mock interviews. You've you've gone through all of the YouTube videos you could have gone through. You've done everything, and yet it doesn't go your way, even though you thought you did well. And that's just life. Like. Shit happens, sometimes you fail. And these coding interviews sometimes are hit or miss. You get bad luck, you get a bad question, who knows? Like I said in the comment that I left on this guy's LinkedIn post, the, the guy who kind of inspired this video, uh, I don't want to sound like a, a rehashed, like, motivational speaker, but in life, sometimes you fail and you gotta pick yourself up. The way that you respond to failure is what's gonna determine whether or not you succeed, not necessarily those failures themselves, right? Just because you fail doesn't mean anything. But if you're able to pick yourself up after those failures and keep your head up and keep going after your, your dreams or your goals or what have you, then you're gonna eventually achieve your goals or achieve your dreams. And so that's what I did here. I remember my uh, interview experience with Google ended up being very drawn out because even though I had gotten my hire decision either a little bit before or after I got rejected from Two Sigma, the team matching process at Google ended up taking two months for me, which was a brutal wait time. It was basically two months where I had been told that I was hired, but I didn't actually have an offer in hand. By the way, Google, I'm not very happy about your whole like team matching process. It's really, it's like, that's really savage. But anyway, that's a topic for a different video. During those two months, I remember I was really disappointed because, you know, had I had the Two Sigma offer, maybe I would have even gone to Two Sigma. In hindsight, I'm really glad that I got the Google offer because I'm just, I think things went really well at Google and Google was just perfect for me. But, you know, that Two Sigma failure was disappointing. But hey, like I had to keep my chin high and or my head high and I had to move forward. Now, at the end of the day, like when there's something that you can't control anymore, just have to forget about it and keep moving forward. So if any of you have gone through coding interview failures, then hopefully you'll be able to relate to this one. Hopefully you'll be able to, to, to say, hey, this guy who seems to have had otherwise like a lot of successes, clearly also he went through failures. Like clearly he had some very disappointing and upsetting moments uh, during his coding interview journey. This guy being me here. And now the last thing that I want to say that I briefly mentioned at the beginning of the video about some sort of overarching theme during my uh, software engineering interview prep, coding interview prep. A lot of people, they still hear all of these stories and they think, yeah, but like this dude had coding interviews at Google, at Lyft, at Two Sigma, and he only had to go through a couple or you know, a few interviews to land that job at Google. But that's not true. I applied to over 300 or 400 software engineering positions after I graduated from my coding bootcamp. And you wanna know how many of these software engineering positions or companies replied to me and invited me for interviews? Less than two handfuls. I think I had a total of like less than seven interviews and a bunch of them ended up you know, falling through, like they, did, they didn't end up leading anywhere. So really like Google and Two Sigma and Lyft and maybe a couple others were really some of the only interviews that I ended up having. I'm super lucky and fortunate that I ended up getting those Google interviews, for instance, and that it worked out well for me. And by the way, I've made a video on how I got those Google coding interviews. Check it out, I'll put the link in the description if you haven't seen it. But the point that I'm trying to make is that it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. I went through over 300 or 400, and I'm not exaggerating here, rejections or, you know, being ignored by companies where, you know, you apply and they just don't respond. You never know what happened to your application, but you're essentially rejected. And that was a brutal time for me. And I had to keep keep at it and keep my head high and, and keep trying. And eventually I had, I got those, those Google interviews that, that fell in my, in my hands and um, I did everything I could to get them. It didn't work out for Two Sigma, but it did for Google and the, the rest is history. So that's what I wanted to say. Basically, we all go through failure. We all have our own unique journeys to get to where we're at or where we wanna be. And uh, you just gotta keep going. You know, you just gotta keep going. You can't let one failure, a few failures or 300 failures stop you from getting that one success, which is that one that you need. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you were able to get something out of my stories. Like I said, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.